Hello. I'm going to do a short video to show how to import a Lightorama LMS sequence into Xlights 4 as a data layer. So first I'm going to select new sequence, musical sequence, select an audio file, 20 frames per second, and I'm going to say done. It creates a skeleton sequence. I'm going to edit display elements so that I can go here, let me fix that, go here and add in the model, so I don't need that anymore, so in David's layout, he's the one I'm trying to help, he has a single megatree model, so you need to add that model to your sequence, if you click on settings here, go to data layers, import, it defaults to defaults to an LMS Lightorama sequence. So I'm going to select this file. Uh, you could turn channels off the end. I normally don't check any of these. But it depends on... that's because I use a Falcon Pi player which can automatically turn channels off at the end. So you hit OK. Now while this is converting, it'll take a little bit. <coughs> You'll see these two lines here will say waiting for Falcon version. You need to wait until that changes to a number of channels. You can see some progress going on down the corner here. Some channels found so far, 2000. You could actually start this import over on the convert tab and you'd see more information spitting out in, in that log window. But since we're not in that window, all we can really look at is what's happening down here in the status bar. So now it's converted a thousand. It's working on the second thousand. And when it's done it's going to populate I believe 2400 channels. So now you see it's done. So what this data layer is showing you is the source file where it pulled the LMS file. It creates a nice sequence file that contains the data. <coughs> So, you can actually come in here later and select this guy and say re-import if you modify your original LMS file and it will actually pull that data in and convert it again if you had made a modification in the source program. That's one thing that's pretty cool. So I'll say done. So if I double click and look at a strand, let me go... So you're not going to see anything yet. I need to pick a different strand. I didn't see any data. Maybe it's maybe that's what I'm trying to show. Yeah, it doesn't show up any data yet. The reason it's not showing anything yet is because we haven't rendered because I don't automatically render. You know, I might have to consider changing that since it seems like it confuses everyone. You either need to hit this render all button or do a save. Both of those render. One of them will save the render and one of them will just let you play it and save later. I'll say test mad Russian and hit OK. So now it's starting to save that sequence. Oh, look at that. It saved it in three seconds. So where does this one... I know the data in this sequence doesn't seem to begin till like 30 seconds. There we go. So I'm actually not sure if this audio goes with this or not. I just don't know the the, the uh, I don't know the sequence since I'm helping someone else.
Okay, there we go. I finally found some of the data. So the data looks like it's kind of scared around. You see how I was saying there, there's no data up until about 35 seconds or so. Then there's a lot of data on these nodes on this strand. So you can see these are not editable effects. It's just all data. <coughs> if you wanted, you could come in and drop in the... Let me turn off that timing here. You could come in and drop an effect down on top of that data and it would overwrite it like that. So you see, in the old days of Nutcracker, this data would have now been destroyed. So that's what's the beauty of a data layer, because if I go in and delete that effect, you see how all that data is gone? Let me go up here and hit the Render All button again, and you see all that data just came back. That's because we saved it in that data layer. So all that data layer is here. You can also, <coughs> most people are going to have your, their Nutcracker layer on top. Any Nutcracker effects render on top of the data layer. You could move it up if you had the purpose of actually having the Nutcracker effects underneath the data. I don't know a reason you'd want to do that, but the option's there. So that's a little, a little quick tutorial on how to bring in data as a data layer. You can see how it renders in, in literally a couple seconds, whereas when I brought in this LMS file as effects, it was literally thousands of effects. You know, every one of these little lines would have turned out to be an effect, and it, it was taking like 10 minutes to render all those effects. So the odds are you're never going to want to go back and, and edit all these effects. So you might as well just bring it in as a data layer, render in a couple seconds, and the nice thing about data layers is if you ever need to come back and you've changed your your data, you can just say re-import and it's running out there and it's doing it again. So I won't make you wait for that conversion, but that would be all you'd have to do because it's already pointing to the original file. So as long as you haven't deleted or moved it, it can immediately re-import that data again. So hopefully you learned something new, how to import an LMS file as a data layer. Thanks a lot.